Good afternoon, and welcome to New Jersey Transit's Accessibility Forum. My name is Sebastian Moreno, Director of Diversity and Inclusion at the Office of Civil Rights and Diversity Programs. I'll be your MC for today. Okay, at this moment, I would like to welcome Mr. Leo Sander, Chief of the Office of Civil Rights and Diversity Programs, to commence today's forum. Wonderful. Thank you, Sebastian. As Sebastian mentioned, my name is Leo Sanders, Chief of the Office of Civil Rights and Diversity Programs here at New Jersey Transit. In this role, it is my privilege to be accountable for ensuring our agency's compliance with applicable state and federal civil rights laws that impact our customers, including the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as driving forward our agency-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. To those joining us in person and the more than 250 who are attending this event remotely, on behalf of the J Transit Executive Management Team and the more than 11,000 employees who work within our organization, it is my pleasure to welcome you to NJ Transit's first ever Accessibility Forum. The choice to call this gathering a forum rather than a meeting was a purposeful one. A forum can be defined as an assembly for the discussion of questions of public interest. We understand and appreciate the increased interest and advocacy that has come up lately related to NJ Transit's accessible services and features we provide to our customers. This forum is an opportunity for us to begin a deeper and ongoing dialogue on that subject with you, where we not only get to hear your specific interests and concerns on the subject of accessibility, but also where we get to share in a comprehensive and detailed way what we provide in terms of accessibility, how we are improving on what we provide, and those innovations we are exploring for the future. Our commitment to accessibility as an agency comes not only from our goals to provide a high quality service experience for all of our customers, but also from our diversity, equity, and inclusion strategic initiative. Our DEI strategic initiative is a function of our NJT 2030 strategic plan and guides the way in which we aim to create a more welcoming, supportive, and responsive environment to all our customers, business partners, community partners, and employees. Our DEI initiative began last year and includes not only external efforts related to accessibility, but the creation of an internal company employee resource group program, including a group for people with disabilities, and a recently begun initiative to enhance our recruitment outreach toward people with disabilities to make it clear New Jersey Transit is very interested in inviting applications from this largely untapped pool of talent to come work within our organization. This accessibility forum is a way of saying in a loud and unmistakable voice to our customers with disabilities and their allies and advocates that we see and value you, your needs related to our services are important to us, and we see being responsive to those needs and exceeding your expectations as part of our goals and mission. Achieving any goal and mission, but especially a goal and mission in the area of inclusion requires dedicated and passionate leadership. We are fortunate to have such a dedicated and passionate leader as the president and CEO of our organization. I welcome to the podium our president and CEO, Kevin Corbett, to provide opening remarks and officially kick off our forum today. Kevin. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. Uh, passionate, maybe a little crazy too sometimes. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I certainly want to thank you, uh, you know, Sebastian, love the, the summer the summer haircut there. Uh, but, uh, you know, thanks really for Leo, for you and the entire team, uh, for all you've done for, you know, the Office of Civil Rights, all the DNI initiatives. And uh, it's a passion that, as you know, I share, but you have really driven it through this organization. Can't thank you enough for all you've done in that regard. Also, uh, certainly want to welcome uh, you know, all our presenters and all the members of the public who are taking the time to, to attend. Uh, whether here in person or virtually. Um, you know, I simply want to you know, make it from the, the get-go that it's unequivocal that NJ Transit's all in when it, be, it comes to providing a fully accessible transit system. Uh, when I joined in New Jersey Transit in 2018, I think it's well known, we were an agency in crisis. We did not have a 10-year strategic plan. We didn't have a five-year capital plan. Um, and, uh, you know, there was no clear path to being a best-in-class transit agency and meeting the uh, ADA, uh, ADA's uh, Act's uh, objectives. And uh, I think since uh, 
you know, since then, I think we've demonstrated our commitment towards this goal in a, a number of ways, and, and have incorporated that in our strategic plan and in demonstrating it concretely in, uh, in a lot of the steps we're taking in our five-year capital plan, which gets updated year, you know, year by year, we updated it again this summer. Um, I think uh, perhaps most important over the past four years, we have uh, completely modernized our uh, indispensable access link service to provide 21st century service for our customers. As I'm sure many of you know, Access Link is a transit paratransit program, you know, which provides convenient appointment-based service that shadows our existing statewide bus road network. Uh, more than one million people take advantage of this service every year, affording them the freedom and mobility to take advantage of all our region has to offer. Our first significant public-facing Access Link improvement came in 2019 with the introduction of Access Link Online, which allows customers to schedule rides, check the estimated time of arrival of the pickup vehicle, and prepay fares electronically through a feature we named Easy Wallet. Uh, to date, more than 950,000 customers have booked trips through Access Link Online, and we've collected nearly $2.5 million in fares through Easy Wallet. Uh, Access Link customers can now also use a self service interactive voice response over the phone to confirm or cancel rides or speak with a live agent. Uh, we even uh, offer a reminder calls and imminent arrival text <coughs> messages or phone calls. Uh, building on the success of Access Link Online, last year in March we introduced a dedicated Access Link mobile app, which provides a user friendly interface for making, canceling, and monitoring reservations. Customers can also update their information and monitor the status of their Easy Wallet payment accounts with just a few clicks of the app. Uh, the app was developed in direct response to customer feedback, so we're going to give today's forum. Again, all this feedback is, is taken, and uh, we look to develop and see how we can constantly uh, further improve. And it, the app provides one-stop shopping for our customers, who previously would have to call in and speak to an operator or visit the website to log into their accounts. In addition to modernizing Access Link, last month, ND Transit launched two new technology initiatives focused on improving system-wide accessibility. First, through a new partnership with Magnus Mode, NJ Transit is now assisting neurodiverse customers with the help of Magnus, an illustrated character within the free Magnus Guard app. The app combines specialized navigation instructions with real-world images to aid neurodiverse customers, such as those who are autistic, who could use extra guidance navigating everyday experience on public transit. Customers can learn more and find links to download the app at njtransit.com slash Magnus Mode. Also last month, we introduced a redesigned, streamlined, and far more user-friendly accessibility webpage, now available at ndaytransit.com slash accessibility. The webpage features new videos about the many services and features of NJ Transit that make it accessible and inviting to all individuals, as well as easy-to-use links to specific information, such as our reduced fare program, community transportation services, and our access link paratransit service. The video, funded by the FTA's Access Mobility Partnership grant program, are captioned in six languages in addition to English. Beyond leveraging technology to enhance system-wide accessibility, we are focused on improving our infrastructure to achieve this goal. ND Transit owns and operates approximately 530 access link vehicles, and every one of our 2,500 buses is fully accessible under the ADA. In addition, last month, ND Transit purchased 143 new cutaway minibuses with lifts with the option to purchase 308 more in the future to provide the sub-recipients for transportation for senior citizens and people with disabilities in New Jersey. Rail the rail station accessibility is another important component of work to improve and enhance mobility. Uh, as many of you know, we inherited a, a system that was built uh, well over 100 years ago, so we go back 150 years or more, when this was not even uh, by private railroads, whether it was the Pennsylvania Railroad, the Erie, the Lackawanna, and that's the infrastructure we, we inherited uh, when uh, from bankrupt railroads some 40 years ago when New Jersey Transit was created. And so clearly on the rail side, there was a long way to go in, uh, from a baseline of where we had to start uh, for our uh, rail stations. Uh, currently, 80 out of 166 commuter rail stations served by NJ Transit are currently accessible to people with disabilities. And I'm proud to note that we are pushing forward aggressively to make more stations fully ADA uh, accessible in line with my comments about uh, having a strategic plan and a five-year capital plan to help guide us to make sure that we achieve those goals. This year in April, I joined Governor Murphy to break ground at our Perth Amboy station, where construction is now underway to make this station fully ADA accessible, providing enhanced options and mobility for people with disabilities. 
We also completely renovate and expand the station building, including the installation of new ADA compliant bathrooms, install two new high level platforms for easy boarding and deboarding, install new elevators and ramps, and make many other additional station, station improvements, all while preserving this station's historic and distinctive design. Construction is also underway at our Lindhurst station following our groundbreaking there last year in April. The project includes a new fully ADA accessible station building, new elevators at both station buildings, high level raised platforms, and large roof canopies, heated waiting areas, and state of the art video and public announcement amenities. The day our five year capital plan also includes the installation of new elevators at a Roselle Park station, which will make it fully ADA accessible in 2024. Overall, I think it's clear to everyone here that NDA Transit is unconditionally committed to the goal of a fully accessible transit system for the people with disabilities for, and for all our riders throughout the state. This effort is fully aligned with, a, with one of our five arch, overarching goals in our 10-year strategic plan. The plan, by the way, is NJT 2030, for those of you who are not familiar with it. And it's, one of those goals is, five key goals, is to power a stronger and fairer economy for all communities in the region. Even more important, it is also quite simply the right thing to do. <coughs> Thank you very much. Welcome back. We'll now begin our presentations. We have a brief we have brief presentations on accessibility covering 13 areas within New Jersey Transit. In the interest of time, we're going to go through all presentations and then have a QA session at the end before we close. We ask that you have we ask that if you have questions about a specific area, you hold that question or enter it into the chat, identifying the presentation area, along with your name and the organization you're representing, if applicable. We will address all questions as before we complete today's forums. We'll now begin. Our first presentation will be by rail operations. With Sebastian in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. <coughs> Thank you very much and welcome back. We'll now begin with our presentations. We have brief presentations on accessibility covering 13 areas within New Jersey Transit. In the interest of time, we're going to go through all presentations and then have a Q&A session at the end before we close. We ask that if you have a question about a specific area, you hold that question or enter it into the chat, identifying the presentation area along with your name and the organization you represent, if applicable. We will address all questions before we complete today's forum. Our first presentation will be by rail operations. Senior Director of Rail Service Planning for New Jersey Transit. I'm here to talk about how we ensure accessibility and compliance with the American Dis Americans with Disabilities Act at our, on our rail system. A little bit about the system first. Uh, we operate 11 lines with 166 stations. Uh, of those, 80 stations are accessible under Americans with Disabilities Act requirements. Um, and just anecdotally, about in the span of my career, about 20 stations uh, of those 80 have been added or improved uh, to meet ADA requirements in the last uh, probably about 20 years. NJ Transit complies with Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act that prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities in the provision of services. Many of our NJ Transit rail stations are accessible to customers with disabilities by providing elevators, ramps, uh, high-level platforms or many high-level platforms, uh, portable lifts for accessibility devices, uh, detectable warning edges along platforms, uh, bridge plates which fill gaps between the platform and the train, 
priority seating and onboard station stop announcements and station announcements uh, for approaching trains. In stations and onboard trains, we rely on our frontline employees and customer service and rail operations to assist customers with accessibility requirements. When boarding a customer with a mobility device, crew members are required to inform the customer if their destination is not accessible and to offer guidance about alternatives. Crew members must allow customers with or without mobility devices to board and get off the train at inaccessible stations if the customer can do so safely and without the assistance of a crew member. In the event an accessibility feature is out of service or unavailable, um, and the customer is unable to get off the train or platform at their destination, the crew member must contact our dispatch office for accessible travel alternatives that are available. And if the only available alternative for the passenger is to be taken to the next accessible station, the passenger will not be left alone there as long as there are more than two crew members. The crew member must remain with the passenger once arriving at the station to ensure that the customer can continue the trip. Uh, returning to, again to the role of our frontline employees, crew members must accommodate any customer who feels the use of a bridge plate would provide them with a safer travel environment. And finally, uh, in addition to accessibility at our facilities, uh, NJ Transit emphasizes accommodate, accommodate, uh, excuse me, accommodation and accessibility on board our trains as well. Uh, features of our train car design include accessible onboard areas, priority seating, retractable seating to allow mobility devices, center door vestibules, and multi-level cars which have additional um, mezzanine space for movement of accessibility devices. Train cars have designated areas to give customers with disability priority, and customers without disabilities that are sitting in these areas will be asked to move in the event a customer with a disability needs access to that point. Thank you, and this concludes our rail operations presentation. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by bus operations. Good afternoon. My name is Lance Norman, I'm the Director of Transportation at New Jersey Transit Bus Operations. New Jersey Transit Bus Operations works across several key areas to ensure ADA accessibility for our customers throughout the bus network. I'm going to briefly touch upon several of the areas, namely equipment, bus shelters, training, maintenance, and facilities. Starting with equipment, every bus in the New Jersey Transit fleet is equipped with the following accessibility features. Lifts to accommodate customers using wheelchairs and other mobility devices, and anyone unable to use stairs or ramps and low floor entry on new articulated buses and the 30 foot transit buses. They're equipped with audible, automated stop announcements and visual stop displays. Continuing with equipment, recent bus procurements have further enhanced reliability and accessibility. Recently, we purchased 110 new articulated buses that have replaced older models, which feature a low floor entry, which eliminates steps at the front entryway, a ramp, which allows for easy mobility device entry without the use of a lift, and they provide for easier boarding and alighting and faster onboarding and securement for mobility devices. <coughs> Regarding cruiser buses, the majority of our cruiser bus fleet has been replaced over the past four years increasing reliability for our customers using lifts and other accessibility features. Future bus replacements. All future transit and suburban bus purchases will feature low floor entry. Bus shelters. New Jersey Transit completed a full assessment of all bus shelters throughout the state in 2021. As a result of this assessment, Bus shelters that feature a full bench are being replaced with a smaller bench, creating an accessible space within the shelter for customers using mobility devices. Bus operator training. New bus operators receive one full day of training on all accessibility systems and equipment, including hands-on use of the equipment, 
Simulation training. Refresher training is also offered for operators when needed. In addition, all New Jersey Transit buses are equipped with video and audio recording capabilities to review interactions with our customers for retraining or corrective actions as needed. Maintenance. All New Jersey Transit buses are kept in a higher state of good repair, reliability, and in compliance with the ADA. Our preventative maintenance programs ensure all ADA components on each vehicle are clean, safe, and in reliable working order. New Jersey Transit's Quality Assurance Department conducts monthly audits of at least 10% of the bus fleet at a time, including function testing on all ADA equipment. These include the lifts and ramps, kneeling systems, internal and external public address systems, destination sign systems, securement systems, including securement belts, flip-up and removable seats, and all applicable ADA-related decals and signage, both interior and exterior. Moving on to facilities. All New Jersey Transit facilities are accessible and include the following accessibility features. Our TVMs now have touchscreen and audio capabilities. Departure monitors have been installed at most locations. At our New York terminals, there have been several improvements to accessibility in recent years. Namely, at the George Washington Bridge bus terminal, the station has been completely renovated with all loading platforms now accessible. Customers no longer must call for their desired bus to come down to the street level to be accommodated. Customers now have access to two elevators that can take them up to the loading platforms. The Port Authority bus terminal, there are 26 gates on the third floor in the north wing that are completely accessible now. Since the 2015 gate change, even more of our customers no longer need to call to board their desired bus. For situations that require it, phone numbers are posted throughout the building that connect directly to New Jersey Transit Dispatcher to dispatch their desired bus to gate 301 for departures on the third floor and gate 421 for departures on the fourth floor. Additionally, New Jersey Transit Bus Operations works closely with all internal departments to ensure ADA compliance for all operating procedures. These include the Office of Civil Rights, Customer Service, Government and Community Relations, and Information Technology. This concludes the bus presentation. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Light Rail Operations. Thank you, Sebastian. Good afternoon, my name is Sean Kushner, and I'm here to discuss accessibility on NJ Transit's three light rail systems. Light Rail Operations continues to make and plan for improvements that ensure accessibility for all whether it's repairing curbing at an entrance to our light rail station, replacing or repairing walking surfaces, or investing significant capital into a vertical transportation, we are committed to providing a better and more reliable customer experience by maximizing access accessibility. Some of our projects that maximize accessibility are our between car barriers, our elevator <coughs> overhaul program, and our accessible areas onboard our light rail vehicles. Start with the between car barriers. The between car barriers were installed as a safety requirement to prevent passengers from falling in between coupled light rail vehicles. These barriers differ on each of our light rail lines. On the Hudson Bergen light rail, retractable straps have been installed at the ends of our light rail vehicles, or LRVs, that are connected when two LRVs are coupled together. On the river line, Safety bollards have been permanently secured to the platforms at the exact location where the potential hazard exists when a coupled at set of LRVs is stopped at the station. And on the Newark light rail, since the Newark light rail only operates with one light rail vehicle, the hazard does not exist and there is no requirement for barriers. On to our elevator overhaul, overhaul port program. Light rail operations understands that elevators are of enormous importance 
and are also an essential accessibility tool for our customers with disabilities. We have recently upgraded several, several elevators on our system. These upgrades include replacement of motors, controllers, and drives. Additionally, doors and sills were, were replaced on other elevators. We are planning and have secured funding for the upgrade and overhaul of several more elevators throughout our system. Accessible areas onboard light rail vehicles. Double door entrance provide easier access for people with mobility devices. devices. Flooring to allow seamless boarding with no additional bridge plating. And wide aisles and large vestibule areas providing accessibility for customers with mobility devices. That concludes my portion of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Access Link. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Happy to be here. We are here for the Access Link team. Althea Branch is the manager of our customer service and outreach department. She has been with New Jersey Transit and Access Link since 2000. Next, I am Danika Parker. I have been with New Jersey Transit since 2000 as well. I'm now the acting general manager of Access Link. I oversee the provision of paratransit service. Today, we will touch on some of the ways Access Link embraces and embodies accessibility. We focus on not just the volume of trips and calls, but the value each trip and call adds to our customers' lives. So we'll touch on the following, provision of service and call center operations, recent legislation, new partnerships, technology updates, outreach and education. Service delivery during COVID. New challenges are emerging as the current conditions are causing people to use public transit more. During the height of COVID, when everyone else was socially distancing, our operators were still securing and assisting our customers. All the access link buses in our, all the buses in our access link fleet are fully accessible and lift equipped. In addition, all have the capability to make arrival announcements. Our customers often hear access link has arrived is a standard phrase. The operations center and telephone delays. Um, ahead of the power, ahead of power transit world, we began testing and perfecting our remote agent capabilities in the operations in 2018. This was a major component of our contingency planning. Access Link has four telephone responsive groups that handle a total of 16 separate call queues and telephone lines. In 2019, Access Link received 1.5 million calls. And in 2021, we received over 900,000. That's a lot of calls. All of our callers have the option to not only call in and speak to an agent, they can also use the IVR, as Kevin mentioned, which allows them to use a touch tone telephone to complete cancellations and check trip status. Other accessible features are our Alice notifications for night before trip reminders, same day notifications, and Where's my bus text messages? <clears throat> While we are actively recruiting, onboarding, and competing to retain our telephone agents, we are also dedicating resources to encourage and support our customers as they use the fully accessible self-service technology options. We know that this will alleviate and reduce some of the telephone delays, plus it saves the customer time. Althea will speak more about how we do that in a moment. Next slide, please. Legislation has encouraged us to continue to incorporate accessibility into more areas. The Reduced Fare Card Program. In years prior, Access Link customers had to separately apply for the Reduced Fare Program. As a, recent, as a result of legislation, all customers found eligible for Access Link are now automatically enrolled in the Reduced Fare Program. Shortly after being certified with Access Link, customers received their Reduced Fare Card in the mail. Streamlining this process serves to widen customers' transportation options, reduces the amount of time to take full advantage of those options, and is an additional cost savings for the customer. The National Voter Registration Act, or NAVR. In response to the National Voter Registration Act, 
We are happy to announce that AccessLink currently provides voter registration information and instructional assistance to all our customers. This information is currently being sent to all AccessLink customers, is displayed at our outreach events, and being offered to customers who call into our certification department. The voting voice of those with disabilities is not just important, but vital. NJS 2517, the Paratransit Improvement Act, also known as the Best Practices Pilot. This ambitious legislation has three phases that establish a pilot program to adopt paratransit best practices, training on those best practices, and regional paratransit coordinating councils. This transformative bill is, a, is to better serve the transportation needs of people with disabilities in New Jersey. Under the law, New Jersey Transit is responsible for collaborating with other stakeholders while streamlining and coordinating paratransit services. The ultimate goal is to ensure customers' needs are met, costs are contained, and services are standardized. The first regional council meeting was actually held earlier today, and we had a really good turnout. Um, and I will turn it over to Elphie. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. All right, uh, new partnerships, exploring transportation network companies. One of our main goals is to provide our customers with greater transportation options. By exploring and increasing our partnerships with TNCs, we increase our ability to readily connect our customers to other transportation resources. This moves us one step closer to meeting some of the first last mile issues plaguing our customers and presents cost saving opportunities for all. MIH. In 2019, we joined First Lady Tammy Murphy's Maternal Infant Health Initiative that looks to reduce infant mortality in low-income communities. Temporarily certifying women who are at critical stages during their pregnancy allows them to gain access to vital, cost-efficient transportation. To date, we have assisted 145 customers. Other noteworthy partnerships. We are collaborating with Access New Jersey, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to providing support to disability advocates, and Covenant House of New Jersey, a community-based program here in Newark. Both will be assisting us with the NAVRA project. Access New Jersey is also assisting AccessLink with an initiative to gather input from our customers. The question posed to their network was, what I wish you knew. Customers will cover topics about their disabilities and the challenges they face using the service. The goal is to infuse our programs, plans, and trainings with customers and stakeholder input. <coughs> technology updates. Most of our technology will be discussed by the IT group's own Jen Park. He'll tell you about Access Link Online, our mobile app, the interactive voice response system, and our electronic fare option, Easy Wallet. We wanted to highlight another technological update. The new digital reservation form, pictured, was created by our very own operations team. We piloted this form and new process with the help of the Citizens Advisory Committee, the National Federation for the Blind of New Jersey, and other Access Link customers. This new reservation option provides customers with a streamlined, user-friendly format and is as simple as filling out an online survey. We launched it in April and have received great feedback. Outreach and education. In our traditional outreach program, upon request, Access Link's Customer Service Department provides outreach to various community-based organizations throughout New Jersey. These events range from presentations and exhibits to bus demonstrations. We look to educate the general public, specifically those persons with disabilities, about available transportation options on the New Jersey Transit bus, rail, light rail, and access link power transit. Customers are also informed of the availability of county power transit, travel training, reduced fare program, and the perks of being an Access Link customer, such as being a certified paratransit rider in New Jersey allows a customer to use any other state's paratransit service as a visitor. In addition, being certified for Access Link automatically enrolls a customer into the reduced fare program. 
Next, we launched another part of outreach in August 2021 titled Mobility Matters. It is a webinar series focused on creating useful original content dedicated to expanding our stakeholders' knowledge of transportation <coughs> and technology. Recently, our recordings of the webinars were added to the accessibility page on the New Jersey Transit website. Last, but definitely not least, new accessibility videos. Another beneficial component in customer outreach and education is providing a visual for customers of what accessibility looks like at New Jersey Transit. These videos demonstrate what to expect when taking the various modes. Knowing what to expect not only helps customer rides go smoother, but also serves to support, encourage, and prepare customers to take public transportation. That concludes the access link portion. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Information Technology. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Jim Park. I'm the Principal Systems Analyst for IT. <coughs> my professional career began 18 years ago when I started as an IT intern for Access Link. Over the years, we have implemented many IT projects, and hopefully they are making positive difference on daily lives for Access Link customers. Uh, today, I would like to go over some of the IT projects that enhance accessibility to the Indian Transit customers, starting with ticket vending machines. Um, in 2018, NJ Transit started the TVM modernization program to install a streamlined TVM meeting ADA requirements. Some of the key ADA features are standardized base, which allows for ADA compliance with uh, maximum reach of 48 inches. TVM locations allow customers to use either front or side approach. Rail and uh, raise letter informational signage directing customers to the various components on the TVM. It has audio capabilities for those with visual impairment. Audio mode is initiated by a touch and screen. All transaction flow is processed through the numeric pin pad. For privacy, standardized headphone jack is provided. Um, we work with the um, New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired to review TBM's audio instructions and made improvements based on their feedbacks. Um, the TBM modernization project completed in the third quarter of 2022. Elevator status and diagnostics. NJ Transit maintains 80 elevators and 57 escalators. <coughs> With the current setup, elevator outages are reported by either staff or customers, and someone needs to update the status manually. To address this, we started a pilot program in Washington Street Light Rail Station using NAC platform. With NAC devices, we can provide real-time status of elevators and escal uh, escalators to operations to our website. Using NAC platform's AI system, we can predict equipment failures to minimize downtime and perform um, preventive maintenance based on usage and predictive analytics. We are working with station operators to help become a sponsor of this technology. Accessing technologies. So um, starting with, um, with accessing online and mobile app self-service platforms, accessing customers are now able to reserve, cancel, check ride status without talking to live agents. Both applications were collaborated with New Jersey Commission for the Blind to improve screen reader compatibility. We received their feedbacks to use headings to structure content to simplify web designs. As of 2022, accessing online and mobile apps are handling over 50% of cancellations and over 30% of reservations. Easy Wallet. Um, it's a cashless payment option for accessing customers. It's a virtual wallet system, much like EasyPass. Customers can deposit funds using their credit card or debit card. It makes payment simple and convenient. There is no need to present card, swipe, or tap anything. It's, a, it's great for customers with disability that limits them from hands in cash. With COVID, contactless payment system helps us protect customers and vehicle operators from health risks associated with hands in cash. Um, we have a few future IT projects for accessibility. Um, starting with the uh, ultra wide band, um, ultra wide band micro positioning project. It's a proof of concept project with Stevenson Institute of Technology. 
Ultra wideband can pinpoint people and objects to within just a few centimeters. It can be used to offer indoor turn turn by turn directions. The pilot testing is ongoing at a engine transit facility. Uh, next is WebCare for accessing customers. WebCare is an add-on module for accessing online, which enables family members, caregivers, or customer representatives to review, reserve, or cancel rides on behalf of accessing customers. It will allow designated representatives to log on to accessing online with their own ID and password, so there won't be any need to share customer uh, credentials. Next is uh, web accessibility improvements. We are working with software to developers and uh, vendors to make our websites and mobile applications more accessible. Uh, web content accessibility guidelines is a set of recommendations for making web content more accessible. Starting with NJTrans.com, we are planning to update the 10 most visited sites first, and the next version of Accessing Online and Accessing Mobile App will be WCAG version 2.1 compliant. Although we are proud of the efforts that we have completed and that are in progress, we view accessibility as an ongoing effort. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Local Programs and Community Mobility. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Janari Rivera, and I am the Acting Director of Local Programs and Community Mobility. My presentation today will provide a summary of how New Jersey Transit works with other agencies around the state to expand accessibility for our residents. Local Programs and Community Mobility distributes and administers pass-through federal and state funding to counties, municipalities, nonprofits, and other state entities around New Jersey. Some of those grant programs include Casino Revenue, also known as ScatterTap, which is a state funding source for the 21 county designated recipients. We also administer the Section 5310 program, or Enhanced Mobility for Seniors and Persons with Disabilities, which is a competitive federal grant for nonprofits, municipalities, and counties. Other grants we administer are the Section 5311 for rural areas around the state, the New Jersey Job Access and Reverse Commute, and the CMAC program, which is a federal congestion mitigation and air quality grant that helps improve sustainability in New Jersey. Community transportation helps bridge the gap where fixed route services are not available, especially in the northern areas of New Jersey, such as Sussex, Warren, and Hutterton County. The major providers of community transportation in New Jersey are the 21 county coordinated systems. Sorry. There we go. My apologies. <laughs> the major providers of community transportation in New Jersey are the 21 county coordinated systems. Each county operates their own service. The modes of service include demand response, deviated fixed route, and feeder to transit. Hours of operations differ by county. Each agency or county identify and determine their own hours and service area. In order to allow, allow for public participation, each county and the state have a citizens advisory committee. These committees include members of the public, specifically the users of these services, so that they can have a voice in service delivery. In addition to the county coordinated systems, there are other um, agencies around the state, such as municipal dollar rides and nonprofit transportation um, agencies. In order to assist our community transportation providers, our department awards accessible minibuses, minivans, and medium duty buses. We procure, distribute, and monitor these purchases and the usage of these accessible vehicles around the state to ensure safety and proper usage. We also provide frequent training opportunities such as ADA, mobility device securement training, and past training, which includes ADA sensitivity training for our drivers and other staff. 
We also ensure our subrecipient partners comply with all federal and state laws and regulations, including the Americans with Disabilities Act. Local programs and community mobility's intent is to fund services that are designed to meet the needs of senior citizens, persons with disabilities, veterans, job seekers, rural and low income residents. Currently, we have over 90 partnerships around the state. All of our subrecipients must participate in a locally developed coordinated human service transportation plan in order to be included in our grants. We participate in these plans and facilitate coordination among subrecipients to ensure there is no duplication of service. All services are accessible to individuals with disabilities and individuals with limited mobility. Vehicles have lifts, ramps for easy boarding, have proper securement locations, and all drivers are trained to proficiency. We also fund many mobility management activities that enhance accessibility, such as travel training, volunteer driver programs, and mobility managers that help passengers secure the best transportation option for them. Our department is also involved in some accessibility initiatives, such as travel training, currently um, being operated by NJ Tip at Rutgers. This is a travel training instruction program for seniors and persons with disabilities that occurs in a group and individual setting. This program helps persons with disabilities learn how to use the fixed route system and build confidence in using that system independently. We are also piloting a low-speed automated shuttle at Marlboro Airport. This pilot is called Avatar. We are testing accessible automated low-speed vehicles in New Jersey. We are working with Rutgers Kate on this initiative. These vehicles will be observed in a closed course testing environment. We hope that through this pilot, we are able to give our community partners the opportunity to see how these types of vehicles operate and test the accessibility of such vehicles in New Jersey. We are also working on a microtransit study pilot project happening um, right now. We are working in partnership with um, New Jersey Transit, Rutgers University, Camden, and Gloucester County. The intention is to provide seamless across county border transportation in real time. And lastly, we have an automated rail station platform lift concept. An expression of interest was developed and released to the public in order for New Jersey Transit to receive ideas from companies that can provide concepts for the development of an automated rail station platform lift. This system is an example of the ways in which New Jersey Transit is exploring more independent boarding solutions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Communications and Customer Experience. Good afternoon. My name is Joe LaMonica. I am the Senior Director of Customer Service for NJ Transit, and I'm pleased to be here to speak to you regarding the ways our Customer Communications Experience team supports all customers, including those requiring accessible services or accommodations. Today, I will discuss some of our efforts under the broad categories of technology improvements, which include the redesigned accessibility section of our website and our partnership with Magnus Mode. I will speak about our customer experience team that conducts station inspections and audits to identify and address any issues that may negatively affect the customer journey. And I will cover communications and describe the multiple points of contact by which we encourage and accommodate two-way communications. NJ Transit has launched new technology initiatives that help customers navigate travel on our system safely and efficiently. These initiatives are focused on maximizing accessibility of public transit to the greatest extent possible. As mentioned by President Corbett, we have revamped our accessibility-related website content and user experience. Now, available at njtransit.com backslash accessibility. The web page features a new overview video about the many services and features of NJ Transit that make it accessible and inviting to all individuals, and easy to use links to specific information and informational videos. 
The videos are captioned in six languages in addition to English and were funded by the FTA's Access and Mobility Partnership Grants Program. They cover several topics, including information about vehicle and station accessibility, the Reduced Fare Program, Community Transportation Services, and our Access Link Paratransit Service, including Access in Link Online, which has been discussed. Another key technology initiative is our Magnus Mode Partnership to assist neurodiverse customers, such as those with autism, and including a free mobile app. The free Magnus Cards app features card decks that help guide individuals through various aspects of riding NJ Transit buses. Magnus Mode assists customers with the help of Magnus, an illustrated character within the app. The app combines a specialized instruction with real-world images to aid customers who could use extra guidance in navigating everyday experiences on public transit. Specifically, the Magnus Mode Partnership initially creates a set of five card decks that each provide step-by-step -step visual, audio, and text instructions that help set expectations and ease anxiety. Funding for Magnus Mode was provided by the Senior Citizen and Disabled Resident Transportation Assistance Program. This program was created by the state to assist counties throughout New Jersey with their community-based transportation services for disabled or senior residents and to provide resources for increasing the accessibility of NJ Transit services. Customers can learn more and find links to download the app at njtransit.com backslash Magnus Mode. Our customer experience team conduct station inspections on rail lines, light rail lines, and all key bus locations throughout the system. Their approach is systematic, working across multiple stations on any given line, but also focused when there are issues raised at specific facilities. Among the key components of these inspections are elevator status, routes of travel, availability of electronic displays, appropriateness of signage, ticket availability, and announcements. While the inspections are aimed at improving the experience for all customers, special attention is also paid to the needs of customers requiring accessible service or accommodation, particularly as they relate to elevator status, path of travel, signage displays, and announcements. The customer experience team also ensures that their findings are directed quickly to be rectified all issues they identify are forwarded to the appropriate operating group and the correct facilities or station groups for mediation. As one might imagine, our communications and customer experience team puts a strong emphasis on two-way communications with customers. Our group issues travel alerts and advisories on service modifications as well as construction or maintenance projects. If a project includes an impact on customers who require accessible services, those impacts and any accommodation on their behalf are provided in detail. Incidents impacting services are communicated in real time via text, email, and push notifications through the mobile app and through social media on main and line accounts of Twitter. We've streamlined our process of issuing alerts and advisories for elevator outages and status information to ensure they get to customers more quickly. They are also readily and easily available, featured on both our website and our mobile app. We encourage customer feedback, including receiving it directly through the online Contact Us web form that is also available on our mobile app, through our call center, and through our customer service field offices. Our transit information center is our seven days per week call center, and agents can provide details and specific information on accessible services. We have customer service field offices in eight major terminals and stations in New Jersey and New York City. In addition to providing a wealth of travel information, the staff in these offices also provide support to customers when they require accessible boarding or an accessible path. We offer an ambassador program where NJ Transit employees are deployed during major events or projects that impact our customers. Part of the typical duties are providing key information and guidance, notably when there are impacts on customers requiring accessible services. Thank you for your time.
Thank you. Our next presentation will be by New Jersey Transit Police Department. Good afternoon. My name is Frank Iorato. Uh, <clears throat> I work for the Transit Police Office of Emergency Management. Today I'm going to be going over a presentation on how we include uh, people uh, with disability in our various emergency preparedness exercises. New Jersey Transit Office of Emergency Management, under the direction of Chief Tresillo, the Office of Emergency Management is responsible for coordinating emergency management activities with all departments and business lines of New Jersey Transit. These emergency management activities include monitoring various information sources, such as National Weather Service, various intelligence products, <clears throat> developing, reviewing, updating emergency plans and supporting materials, coordinating with various departments and business lines to identify, implement mitigation measures to reduce the consequences from hazards that may impact New Jersey Transit, coordinating response and recovery as, uh, <coughs> coordinating re response and recovery efforts across the agency for various emergencies, ensuring the management and proper functioning of the New Jersey Transit Emergency Operations Center. OEM is also responsible for homeland security training and exercise within the agency. One of the um, one of the programs we follow is the HG model, which is the Homeland Security Exercise and Evaluation Program. It's the federal national standard. Uh, this program is in, intended to evaluate emergency plans, plans, procedures, and resource capabilities to identify areas for improvement, testing of communication system, training personnel on emergency plans, emergency standard operation procedures, and exercises such as fire drills or simulations of full-time emergencies providing the mechanisms for these evaluations to occur. <clears throat> what is a full-scale exercise? A full-scale exercise is a multi-agency, multi-jurisdictional, multi-discipline exercise involving police, fire, EMS, OEM, and transportation, and various other types of disciplines, testing and validating emergency response plans and procedures. Why does New Jersey Transit include people with various disabilities in our exercise? We include people with disabilities in our exercises because, um, because people with disabilities ride New Jersey Transit. And we want the exercise to reflect the real-time conditions. New Jersey Transit OEM beginning, uh, began to include people with disabilities in our emergency drills annually since 2010. People with disabilities have participated in drills throughout our transit system on the North Light Rail, the Hudson Bergen Light Rail, the River Line, New Jersey Transit Rail Lines on the Hoboken and North Divisions uh, all over the state of New Jersey. People with disabilities have participated in the following evacuation scenarios on types of transportation throughout the state, active shooter scenarios, fire, derailment, mass casualty, and hazmat. People with various types of disabilities have participated in our exercises people who are deaf, people who are blind, people with mobility uh, disabilities, people who have con con cognitive uh, disabilities, and uh, our police officers receive annual training uh, on, on, on accommodating people with <coughs> autism and cognitive disabilities. And the picture reflects one of our active shooter drills in November uh, in New Brunswick a few years back. Uh, Chief Tresillo uh, with the white vest with Ed Hoff from uh, one of the directors from ADA uh, speaking with some of the folks who volunteered uh, to participate in the drill with uh, different types of disabilities. <clears throat> There's some various photos from uh, different drills that we've done. The, the, the pictures reflect some of the various exercises that we've conducted all over the state of New Jersey, Newark, Hoboken, uh, Little Falls, Montclair, South Amboy, Long Branch, Atlantic City, Pensalkin in, in recent years, but we, we spread the drills all over the state uh, to try to um, tap into different, different jurisdictions and uh, different folks. <clears throat> These drills, as you can see, reflect active shooter, fire, derailment, mass casualty, and hazmat scenarios. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Office of System Safety. Good afternoon, everyone. 
My name is Dale Solpe. I'm the Senior Director of Safety for Rail and Service Transit, which includes our bus system. I'll be presenting today on our bus stop safety review and analysis program. I'll include the three topics here, which are bus stop maintenance and ownership, bus stop condition reviews, and access evaluations. First, I'd like to point out that bus stops are owned and maintained by a local municipality or the individual state if located on state roadway, not New Jersey Transit. The governing party is responsible for maintaining each bus stop regardless of whether or not a bus stop shelter is in place. Bus stops are reviewed upon request from internal and external partners. These may include frontline employees, bus operators, supervisors, my safety team, also customers, local and state officials, and even businesses who may expand or change their facility workforce needs. My team perform over a hundred of these types of safety reviews each year throughout New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, which is the service areas we provide it. Each stop is evaluated for accessibility to and from the bus stop, including walking surfaces, lighting, and the ability to safely deploy our bus lift equipment. Where feasible, changes to accommodate the needs of our customers are provided for municipal approval. When considered satisfactory, changes are recommended, unsatisfactory, I'm sorry, changes are recommended. When unable to accommodate New Jersey Transit's safety recommendations, they're not approved. Thank you, and that concludes my presentation. At this time, I'd like to int introduce from the Office of System Safety, Catherine Smith. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Katherine Smith, and I am a safety education program specialist for the Office of System Safety. The, our office began in 1986 with the primary purpose to support and enhance New Jersey Transit safety initiative policies. We facilitate in-person and virtual presentations and workshops. The safety education specialists are committed to several principles assisting in formulating and disseminating policies that promote safety. We consult with the Chief of the Office of System Safety to improve safety protocols. We advocate for the company and the community. We plan safety awareness programs and activities, and we keep current on industry trends concerning safety. And now, it is my honor and privilege to present to you and introduce to some special seat safety education awareness training, which is a specialized approach using applied behavior analysis. And I would like to introduce to you the voice of oh, my little slides. It's going backwards. Oh, wonderful. Okay, here we go. Special seat. Um, this is my friend, Ling Weenie. Here's your microphone. Hello, everybody. My name is Ling Weenie, and I am the special seat spokesperson. Hello. <laughs> Ling Weenie has been working with me for 15 years, and she was chosen to increase safety awareness of students with disabilities, specifically those with autism and speech delays. And special seat We'll have puppets like Linguini and puzzles and learning building cards and tangible trains and songs and arts and crafts and social stories and positive reinforcement. And we hope that the, the program is a success. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Real Estate. How do you follow a puppet? 
Anyway, hello, my name is Mike Murphy, M-I-K-E-M-U-R-P-H-Y. I'm the Senior Director of Parking for New Jersey Transit within the Real Estate, Economic Development, and Transit-Oriented Development Department. Our department is, among other things, responsible for generating non-fare box revenue for New Jersey Transit. This is generally done through the use of our property for retail, billboard advertising, and the review of sale of any New Jersey Transit land that may be deemed excess for possible transit-oriented development. Today I want to briefly go over two sections, the managing of commuter parking lots and also the station retail stores, which will ensure that the retail tenants and the commuter parking lot operators are responsible for ADA compliance for any improvements or changes to the New Jersey Transit space. So this is the Westmont station, one of our newer stations parking lots within the NJT system. As it was being built, we consulted with the U.S. Department of Justice Disability Rights section of the code regarding accessible parking spaces. Given that the number of spaces designed for the lot, which was 217, fell within the 201 to 300 space uh, count, it generated a total of seven accessible spaces, one van accessible and six uh, accessible parking spaces. Now, this is just a minimum guide, and if we have to adjust to increase, we do. Uh, again, it's, after it's built and in operation, we do rely on the commuters to, uh, who utilize a lot to give feedback to make a better commuting experience. As part of uh, the NJT uh, leasing licensing process, we also ensure best practices for ADA compliance, that all third-party vendors provide a statement of ADA compliance with their submission, construction drawings for all real estate projects. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by planning. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Viscardi, Director of Programmatic Planning in the Planning Department. Um, how planning addresses accessibility, I'm going to go over a couple of uh, bullets and uh, just talk a little bit about each. Uh, first one is guidelines and standards. New Jersey Transit Planning maintains a guidelines and standards manual to provide conceptual overview of design goals to professionals who are engaged in planning, designing, rehabilitating, or constructing New Jersey Transit commuter rail stations. The manual highlights that rail stations should seek to provide customers with simple, easy to locate, and navigable access ways, enabling the station complex, complex to mesh with the surrounding area and encouraging access from local streets, activity centers, and connecting modes. The manual, last released in 2015, is currently being revised to account for changes in industry best practices, planning, engineering, customer expectations, ADA and Title VI requirements, public safety, fleet operations, and technology that have occurred in the intervening years. Next uh, bullet is access to transit. New Jersey Transit works with municipalities to identify improvements intended to make pedestrian and bicycle routes to transit safer. We encourage municipalities to design their streets for all users. What we do look at is municipalities that have adopted complete street, uh, a complete street policy that they're easier to work with. They've already gone through the motions of, of identifying uh, the need to make their streets safer. The last bullet uh, of, of these three is rail station accessibility. New Jersey Transit Planning develops high-level concept plans to assess feasibility of improvements aimed at providing accessibility at legacy rail stations that are currently not accessible. A recent effort includes the new Lyndhurst station, which is under construction. That did start as a concept in the planning department. New Jersey Transit Planning also prepares feasibility assessments and develops early design concepts for accessibility improvements at major terminals and intermodal facilities such as New York Penn Station and Hoboken Terminal. Most recently, uh, we have published a revised transit-friendly planning handbook. The address below there is where you can see get an electronic copy of it. Uh, this was first published in 1993, and in 2022, we have revised it, uh, updated it, um, added in information such as inclusivity, makes communities accessible, improvement of urban environment benefits, 
that benefit all users. This, this is really guided for local decision makers and planners, designers and consultants and contractors. Uh, it's, it's available, as I said, on the, uh, on the web page at the address that's posted. And that concludes uh, my portion of the presentation. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by Capital Programs. I'm Rick Schaefer, the Chief Engineer. Uh, my name is spelled uh, R-I-C-H-S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. For reference, that's the same as the Chief here. Next slide, please. Oh, I got ahead. I'm used to people next slide, and I'm used to actually doing it. So, um, A lot of people ask, where do stations fall in what we do and how we prioritize our work? Um, and within the capital program, we have a list of priorities that we use to rank projects, promote them, or identify them and weigh them against each other. You can see highest, high, and medium, we have no low priorities. But um, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and social sustainability are our highest ranking uh, bucket, uh, right up there with the actual operation of the railroad when it comes to business performance and being fiscally sustainable. So you can understand that when we look at capital projects, accessibility and uh, inclusion are the highest we can make them. Um, that leads right to our rail stations program. These are all stations in progress. Uh, Jack Trappuccino spoke before that in 20 years he'd seen about 20 stations, which is about a station a year. I'm pleased to say that right now we have four separate stations in various stages of construction, uh, including uh, Lyndhurst Station, which was mentioned before by, by Mike Piscardi. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we have uh, uh, New York. North Brunswick, New, New Brunswick, which we are doing some accessibility. Her Hamboy is under construction, as well as Elizabeth. In addition, we have Trenton Transit Center, Brick Church Station, Bloomfield, North Elizabeth. Newark Penn Station is ongoing construction and design work right now. All these stations are in progress. We have really accelerated and built out our program to make accessibility the priority that we say that it is. Um, in addition, we have some projects that we are advancing as well, including Andover Station. Uh, we're starting to look at Metuchen uh, in terms of study, as well as Passaic Bus Terminal, Union City Bus Terminal, which is a new project, and Hoboken again, which is one of the largest intermodal terminals on this side of the planet. So making sure that that's fully accessible is important. Um, I would like to go back and just pre-mention Passaic Bus Terminal and Union City Bus Terminal. Um, Two-thirds of our passengers travel by bus, so the terminals are of critical importance in making sure that all those accessibility features are there so everyone can use our system. Um, what does accessibility mean to us when we design a capital program? Uh, it means clear access path to the platforms and boarding ramps. It means elevators where they're appropriate, ramps where also appropriate to make sure that anybody can get up to the right level get onto the mode of transport, whether it be a bus, or a light rail, or a train, or access link, making that path clear and easy to use is a critical aspect of actually using transit. And then of course, the accessible features, we don't just worry about wheelchair access, accessibility for all means, accommodating everybody and all their needs as, much, as varied as they might be, from either high resolution information monitors, to highly high quality audio audible announcements so people can see and hear when their other senses may be impaired. So it's truly meant to be an all-encompassing program so that anybody can use any of our stations and our system when they need to show up to it. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation will be by the Office of Civil Rights and Diversity Programs. Hello. My name is Ed Hoff. I'm the Director of ADA Compliance in the Office of Civil Rights and Diversity Programs. And before we talk about the efforts of our office, I'll begin by sharing briefly about uh, our office and what we do. Our office has four main accountabilities. Three of the four have responsibilities for ensuring federal, state, federal and state civil rights. 
The Office of Business Development supports compliance for historically disadvantaged small and disabled veteran-owned businesses. We support compliance with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act and the Environmental Justice Requirements, as well as the Americans with Disabilities Act for our customers and communities. We support our organization's efforts to enhance our diversity and ensure an equitable and inclusive environment where everyone experiences being welcomed, supported, and valued. All four areas have in common a commitment to supporting New Jersey Transit's goal of providing a best-in-class service experience to all New Jersey Transit customers and communities. We work as a team uh, with all areas of the agency in their efforts to ensure compliance with the ADA and innovate ways to create and enhance our programs and services so that they do provide an inclusive and welcoming travel environment and experience for customers with disabilities. Some key areas of focus are working with our service operating modes. This is the main focus of what we do, right? Efforts to provide a better customer experience through our practices and technology. Efforts to explore, consider, and implement new technology that might improve accessibility and enhance our outreach efforts to people with disabilities and provide an optimal interview and hiring experience for employment opportunities here in New Jersey Transit. To keep up to date on best practices and work collaboratively to improve our accessible services and features, we also consult with other transit agencies like New York City Transit, as well as other agencies nationwide on subjects like travel instruction and service changes related to COVID-19. Sometimes we seek the assistance of agencies with a specific expertise or insight on projects. We've partnered with, as you've heard earlier, the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired many times over the years, providing us feedback as we developed our ticket vending machines and our New Jersey Transit apps, as it just as two examples. And we've engaged the Rutgers Center for Advanced Infrastructure and Transportation, the Kate Center, in many projects, as uh, Janelle mentioned earlier, the autonomous vehicle technology. Collaborating with these experts and dedicated people, our office continues to work to improve systems and services. Here are uh, a few recent successes that have come out of our joint efforts. Our next generation of commuter rail cars will have bridge plates stored on board speeding the boarding process for customers that cannot traverse the gap between the platform and the train. Plans are moving forward for a new fare collection system and ticket vending machines that will have improved accessibility features, including speaking to the customer for those who cannot read the visual instructions. A new streamlined process for notifying customers of elevator outages has been implemented, allowing customers to adjust their travel before setting out. And uh, one of our largest accomplishments in the past year, you've already heard about a couple of times today, uh, it's in collaboration with communications and the customer experience and with the assistance of many areas of the agency, we produced a series of accessibility videos that showcase the ways in which New Jersey Transit services are accessible to people with disabilities. As you'll see in a moment, the videos cover the operating modes and services like the reduced fare card program that was also mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go to our website's accessibility page where you can overview, where you can view the over, overall video. We, could, we produced uh, videos, which was mentioned, which is an overall video, and then clips uh, broken down into specific pieces. And I'm gonna talk about the navigation there. So here on the screen, you can see um, there are, but this is the accessibility page of New Jersey Transit's website uh, that uh, this link just brought me to. And you can see, as if you scrolled up, you can see that there's a, uh, the other way, you can see that there's a video. That's the overall video that's a, it's about um, 12 or 13 minutes long with all the pieces put together that explain everything. And then the buttons above will bring you to the individual video clips. And right now we're going to, uh, Watch the train accessibility video clip right after this uh, will be the end of my presentation. So uh, let it go, let it rip.
look at our accessible rail services. Many of the 166 rail stations served by New Jersey Transit are accessible, and there's a continuing construction program to bring more online. These accessible stations are equipped with elevators, ramps, mini high-level platforms, or portable lifts. Additional rail station accessibility features include lower ticket windows and accessible ticket vending machines. Welcome to New Jersey Transit. To initiate voice, press enter key on the keypad. The keypad is located to the right of the screen. Platform edge detectable warning strips and accessible parking areas. All accessible stations are shown on the system map with the international symbol of accessibility. When you get on the platform, you can ask for a crew member for a bridge plate to make it easier and safer to board the train. Bridge plates are available on all accessible high-level and mini high-level platforms. The accessible cars on each train are marked with the international symbol of accessibility. Once on the train, priority seating signs show the location of accessible areas. If these areas are occupied, customers may ask a crew member for assistance. Customers may also stay in the vestibule areas by the center doors. The accessible area in the multi-level train cars is located on the boarding level at each end. Remember, the train crew is there to help make your trip as comfortable and convenient as possible. Make sure you let them know where you're going so they can ensure proper accessible services are made available. That concludes today's forum, uh, but not this conversation. As I mentioned at the start, this forum is the beginning of a deeper dialogue on the subject of accessibility. Uh, we understand that there are a lot of thoughts uh, and a lot of questions that you have, and we are certainly up to engage in these discussions. Um, I want to make clear that uh, the use of MS Teams and webinar in this format was intended uh, to enhance the ability for people to be able to engage in this conversation who may not be able to engage in it by other means. Uh, clearly, we will work to improve on the way in which we engage in this conversation and we look forward uh, to getting your feedback on how we can do that and what recommendations you have. Following the forum, we will distribute the survey to get your feedback on this event. Uh, also, we'll be asking about any additional comments you have regarding accessibility. So if you didn't make a comment today, uh, or when able, were unable to, you will have an opportunity to do that via the survey. Within the next day or so, uh, an edited video of this forum uh, and a PDF of the presentation slides will be available uh, along with a link to the survey. Thank you for joining us for today's forum and have a great evening. Thanks.